Okay, here's what we're going to need for supplies for the Herstopolis project. The main things we're going to need are, first of all, the molds for it. This is mold number 370, mold number 371. You get these from Herstarts, and they are silicone rubber molds. They're durable. They will last for hundreds and hundreds of castings, and these two will do the whole big project for us. You're also going to need some dental stone for this. Now, I would not suggest plaster of Paris. Be sure you get dental stone. Uh, go to eBay, look for the plaster guys, and type in for the search dental stone. You'll find lab stone, ortho stone, dental stone. As long as it's got stone in the name, it will be perfectly fine. You'll probably get a 25 pound box for about $36. So the main expense of this and the main ingredients for this project, about $36 or 25 pounds worth of dental stone, $34 for one mold and 34 for the other mold. And that's the main expense of this whole big project. Now you are gonna need some other supplies that'll help you out here. Some of these supplies are a work surface. Just get a hardback book. It could even be smaller than this. Uh, that's going to be the surface we're going to work on. You're going to need some cheap plastic cups. You're going to need a cup measure, some paper towels. You're also going to need a uh, fine mist spray bottle that you can use. Uh, you can get them with the hair care products. This costs about a dollar. You will need some uh, dishwasher rinse aid. Now this is not dish soap. This is a rinse aid. It's usually blue and you put it in your automatic dishwasher so your glasses don't get spots whenever your uh, dishes get washed. So you'll want some of that. You'll want a blunt object of some kind that we can use to kind of smack on the work surface to knock the air bubbles out of the dental stone. You're going to need something to scrape over the top with so we get a nice flat surface. It could be a scraper like this or it could be a uh, plastic ruler or anything flat that you can use to scrape with will work fine. You'll need a spoon of some kind to stir the dental stone. And then you'll also need a couple of trash bags to cover your work surface and also cover our book. Okay, the first thing you want to do is take a large trash bag and cover your work surface with it. A small kitchen table will do just fine. You don't need a lot of space to do this. The second thing you're going to need is you're going to need to take your book and you're going to need to slide it into a trash bag as well. I used a smaller kitchen trash bag to put the book in. So as long as you cover the book, that's fine. If you have a smaller book and you can use a gallon freezer bag, that will work just fine as well. Now, when you first get the molds in the mail, they will have a coating of baby powder on them. The first thing you want to do is wash that baby powder off. So turn on your bathroom faucet full force and just simply run it underneath of there. And what you want to do is you just want to put full force down on each of the uh, openings or the holes that are on each of these. This is kind of important because there's a lot of fine detail, especially on the top pieces from mold number 371. Wash that out well and then take the other one and then go around each surface of each opening and be sure you wash those clean. Be sure to wash all that baby powder out. Now you only have to do this once after you receive the mold in the mail. After you wash it out for the first time, you never have to wash it out again. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is mix up our dishwasher rinse agent. What this does is it breaks the surface tension of the water. So what happens is uh, water has surface tension to it, which causes it to uh, uh, bead up. And what happens is if you pour water down into a mold, that water will bead up and cover up little details and cause air bubbles to happen where you won't get the details to come out. Dishwasher rinse agent will break the surface tension of the water so that water flows down into all the little details inside the mold. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix that up. Uh, first of all, on your uh, fine mist uh, bottle, be sure that it's a fine mist. It'll do kind of a fine spray like that. That's what you want. Open the thing up and you, what you want to do is probably uh, you're going to fill it up with water and then after you get uh, pretty much full of water, you want two or three drops. You don't want much. If you put any more than two or three drops in, you might cause more problems than you solve because it will actually bubble up if you put too much in. So two or three drops, shake it up, that should, just, uh, that should be just fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix up the dental stone. I'm going to start with a half a cup of water and that should be enough dental stone to fill both molds. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the water and we're going to uh, pour it into one of the cheap plastic cups that we have. And then I have some of the dental stone I've scooped up into a, another plastic cup. And what we're going to do is shake it in. Now you might ask, well, how much powder do I put in? 
So different dental stones require a different amount of powder. So what I'm going to do is show you a method of pouring this in and mixing it in so you'll get the exact right amount of powder added to the water uh, to make this work out. So what I'm going to do is you're going to pour it in and pour it in and you'll notice that it all sinks to the bottom and then pretty much disappears. So when that happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop up some more powder into this cup. Let's see if I can get some in there and then I'm going to do it again. And so what you're going to do is I'm kind of sprinkle it. Notice how I'm kind of turning the cup. Notice how we're getting a little bit of powder on the table. Sometimes that just can't be helped. And I'm kind of working around and shaking it and shaking it into the cup. And you'll notice it's sinking to the bottom, but you'll notice it's not sinking quite as quickly as what it had done before. So what I'm going to do is get a little closer so you can see what's happening to the top surface of this. So everything has gone down in, but it went quite a bit slower than before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some powder on the top and I'm going to wait. Now you notice that it's not sinking down into the water like it did before. You notice that we have a, an island of dry powder on the top and the sides are slowly kind of seeping into it, but the top actually has a texture to it. The top doesn't look like a clear, flat, glossy lake. The top looks like it's actually cracked or dry earth. Okay, so when you see the top surface looking kind of like cracked, uh, cracked mud and a little bit of dry on the top, that's almost perfect. That's almost exactly right here is just about exactly the amount of dental stone that or amount of powder that we want added to the water. So right here is perfect. If you want, uh, you could also uh, sprinkle just a touch more, but I really wouldn't add much more to it. It's pretty much there. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our spoon and we're going to go ahead and stir this around. Now you'll notice it's still a little thin, but that's the advantage of dental stone. Dental stone can be a little thin and still be very strong. Now the next thing we want to do is spray the surface of the mold with this uh, rinse agent that we'd mixed up. So what you want to do is you want to hit it pretty good. Give it a nice good solid layer of this uh, rinse agent over the surface. Be sure that you soak it really good and then we're going to flip it upside down and smack the excess out of the mold. You might want to do this kind of on to the side get that excess out of there and that will help this dental stone flow into all the details. So what we're going to do is we're simply just going to take our cup of dental stone here and every time before you pour it kind of stir it up a little because it will start to get thicker on the bottom. So you want to kind of stir that up and then when you pour it in I suggest kind of pouring around the edges of the mold and letting it kind of flow in. Now you'll probably have a good you know five minutes before this stuff starts to uh, thicken up on you and if it does thicken up on you you can always mix it around with a spoon and make it thin again and that's the thing about dental stone it, it's got a thixotropic property to it that when you agitate it when you kind of mix it up it will make it thin again so once we have it at this point I'm just going to set the uh, mixed dental stone to the side I'm going to take our handle and I'm going to smack underneath what I've done is I've moved the book off the edge of the table here and let's see if I can kind of go down a little bit you can see that this is actually off the edge of the table and I'm going to smack up under the book and what you want to do you know you might be sure it's an old book that you don't care if you dent it uh, but kind of smack it up and you'll see a few bubbles come up to the top okay so no fancy equipment uh, no specialized equipment all we're doing to do is just kind of knock the bottom of it like that and at that point, that's pretty well done. What I like to do is take this mold. Let's go ahead and get our camera back. Take this mold. What you want to do is set it over to the side. And some of the pockets that weren't completely full up, at this point, you can go ahead and fill up the rest of the way. And then you're just going to leave that set there. And then we're going to repeat the process for the second mold. Once again, we're going to take it and we're going to completely cover the surface with the rinse agent. Be sure it's good. Smack the excess out. Take your cup, give it a nice good stir. Be sure you kind of stir it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour it and pour it onto the ridges in between the blocks. And you'll notice this stuff at this point is still fairly thin. Okay. It's still fairly thin. So it will flow pretty well into the mold. So I'm just going to pour a little more there, pour a little more there. And you know what? I don't think it's all that critical if we 
you know, go ahead and fill the mold all the way to the top. I was kind of afraid some of the dental stone would spill out over the sides when we move it, but it really doesn't seem to be a problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this sucker all the way up to the top. And once we've got it like that, uh, we're going to slide the book off the edge of the table and we're going to smack it again. And you will notice a few bubbles coming up to the surface. I see a few bubbles coming up to the surface. Yeah, I've probably got about six, eight, maybe 10, uh, 10 bubbles uh, come up to the surface. There we go. Now that once you've got that done, we're going to set this aside. And I would let this set for about three minutes to thicken up before you scrape it. Some dental stones you can scrape immediately, but I have found in some cases that if you try to scrape it immediately, sometimes these will kind of concave a little bit on the bottom. So it's kind of when it's this liquid, it's kind of like scraping over a cup of water and expecting it to be level after you scrape over a cup of water. Now you also notice that we actually had a bit of a dental stone left over in the cup, which is kind of wasteful. So uh, we used half a cup of water and we had this much left over. So the next time we do it, I would go a little bit less than half a cup of water. So at this point, while you're waiting for it to firm up, go ahead and wipe your spoon off. Go ahead and clean it up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pour the rest of this into the trash. Whatever you do, do not pour this down the sink. Never pour a uh, dental stone or plaster of any kind down your sink because it will clog your pipes and you will never be able to get them clean again. So be sure that you pour this into the trash. Now, when I scrape them, I kind of like to turn the mold sideways like this so I can go across it like that. You can scrape it like that, but for some reason, you know, I just like to do it this way. Uh, so what you want to do, I like to just kind of very lightly go across across the top, barely just with the weight of the scraper. And if there's excess water, a lot of times that excess water will come off with it like that. Then what you can do is you can push just a little bit harder. And I'm holding this at about a 45 degree angle and I'm going to scrape across, but I'm not going to use much pressure. If you find that you have a lot of residual left on the surface, you can use a little more pressure. So what I'm going to do is hold it at a 45 degree angle and I can also angle the blade this way while I'm going across. So what I can do is kind of, you know, go across like this and scrape across the top of the mold to kind of clean it off. Now, what you can do is, is when you're scraping across it, uh, you can take and, uh, you know, clean the blade off. And if you found that you've concaved the blocks, if you find that they're kind of dipping down in, what that means is that you're on too high, you're scraping out too much. So if they're kind of concave, what you need to do is lean the blade down a little bit more and go across it. And if you find that you've scraped a little bit too much off, you can kind of lift this excess up and see how I just picked it up and kind of pushed it back across the top of the mold. And then you got a fresh start. You can try again to try to get this as level as you can. It's not critically that it's critical that it's perfectly level, but I think I can do a little better job. So I'm gonna lean it, uh, I'm gonna lean it uh, down a little bit more and I'm gonna kind of push like there and we're gonna scrape across it and that is a nice clean scrape. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. I'm gonna hold it about at this level. I'm gonna scrape across it that looks like a nice clean scrape. Now you may not be able to see it, but I've got kind of a low trash can set down at the edge of the table. So that as we de, uh, demold these blocks, all the excess is gonna kind of fall into our trash. When, we, when I emptied the uh, uh, dental stone out of the cup, what I did is I emptied it out and I left the cup upside down in the trash can. So it would kind of drain out and harden. Now that it's completely hardened, what you can do is you can just kind of bend the cup like this and then all that dental stone, most of it will fall out and you can reuse the cup. If the cup is still a little bit dirty, you can take a paper towel, go around the inside of the cup like that, and then you can kind of clean it out. What I like to do is just take a paper towel and kind of go around like that. And I, I don't like to waste, you know, plastic cups. So if I can reuse them, I will reuse them. Now I've got a clean cup that I can use again. Now, after I demold the blocks, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw them into these cardboard boxes. And after you get all your castings done, I would just leave them in the cardboard boxes for a couple of days and just let them dry out completely. And then you can start gluing and finish up your project. If you have a food dehydrator, that helps dry them up in a couple hours. Or you can set them in the oven at a very low temperature, like 120 degrees. And you can bake them on 
on a cookie sheet for maybe a couple hours that way. That also works pretty well to dry them out quickly. But I would just throw them in a box and leave them for a couple days in a box. Okay, now let's see how these pieces came out here. What I'm gonna do is demold them, throw them, uh, throw them block by block in a box. So what you wanna do is you just wanna bend the mold and you wanna take a block and you wanna pull it out. And it looks like it pulled out pretty well. I mean, there's a lot of fine detail on here. I did get, I think, one tiny bubble in the corner right up here. So if I can zoom in on that, uh, you can kind of see that there's just a tiny bubble in that corner. Uh, and what you can do is you can take, if you find that there's one spot that's giving you trouble more than others, what you can do is you can take this uh, dishwashing rinse agent, spray it right in the mold on that one, and use a paintbrush handle. This is a little plastic fork that I cut all the teeth off except for one. And what you can do is you can just kind of take it and work it down in there to make sure that you get that surfactant down into that little corner. And if you do this as you're demolding it, uh, you know, most, most of the molds, you don't have to even mess with this because most of them don't have as high a detail as this. This is an extremely high detailed piece mold. Most of them, you don't ever have to worry about it. So we're going to demold another piece and we're going to look at it. And that one, this one came out perfect. I do not see any air bubbles anything and all we did was bang on a book to you know get the air bubbles out of it so that one turned out extremely nice so if i'm going to do the other one i look at this one uh this one this one came out perfect i don't see any air bubbles uh, any problems with it at all I, I think it turned out just fine and so one by one i'm going to do this to see if i if i get any air bubbles in any of these so this one right here i'm looking at it and it looks perfect uh, let's take a look at this one right here. I'm thinking this one might cause me a problem. No, this one's perfect too. Now, once you're finished demolding, what you can do is the book that you worked on, it's got a little plaster on the surface. Just take a paper towel and wipe over it. And now you got a clean book again. Also on your work surface on the table where you've got excess plaster, just take a paper towel and just wipe it off. And I'm just kind of wiping it off down into the trash and you have a clean surface to do your next casting with.